Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to make some nice sample based pads using Tal Sampler in a VST of your choice. First thing you're going to need is a VST of your choice. I'm using the Korg Wave Station, the greatest synth in the world. And I have a custom bank here of a bunch of dreamy swirly pads. Just FYI, I am planning on completing this and releasing it out into the wild for a fee, of course. A lot of really good dreamy pads in here. So first thing you want is you're going to find a synth. And basically the idea here is we're going to play a nice chord. We're going to bounce it down and sample it and throw it into Tal Sampler, which is going to give us that really old school sound as we start transposing it. So you can really use any synth you want. Um, Wave Station's great though. So we're going to play a nice minor nine here. So what I'm going to do is just record this in and maybe do three or four bars. So let's do that. There we go. And it doesn't really matter about the uh, smooth out there or the cutoff. We don't really have to worry about that because we're going to manipulate it a good bit. So this pad is in MIDI now, but we need to bounce it to audio so we can use it in Tal Sampler. Um, it's different depending on the DAW you use, but in Bitwig, you can just right click, go bounce in place, and then we get the audio file right here. Now we can see, let's just check our levels. It's not super loud, so I'm just going to bump up the gain on the audio. I think that is perfect. So next thing I'm gonna do is export the audio out of Bitwig so it exists as a dot wave, and then I can import it into Tile Sampler. This is different based on the DAW you use, but in Bitwig, you go to File, Export Audio, select the loop region, find the track that you wanna export, that's the Wave Station. All right, so that is exported out. We no longer need the Wave Station track. I'm gonna delete that in Open Tile Sampler. Let's open our file browser here and look for that new sound we just exported, and here it is. So what we can do in Tal Sampler, we're on a new patch here. We go to layer A, and we just drag and drop right into there. Now I'm gonna click on the waveform here and turn off loop, and there's our sample. We can see it's mapped from key C3 to key G7, which is illustrated here as well. So if I play any of these, it will trigger the sample just at different pitches. Now, because we sampled a chord, you get this really cool parallel harmony, which is classic old school 90s sound for really anything, jungle, house, etc. The original pitch is C3. But if we play a C4, it's pitched up, or a C2. That's that classic sound. So cool, we have that. Let's start processing this thing. First thing I'm gonna do is change my amp envelope. I'm gonna add a good bit of attack so the sound comes in a little smoother. And then I'm gonna add a good bit of release so it goes out nicely. Now I'm going to come to the master here and I'm going to limit the polyphony just because if you play a lot of notes, it sounds like shit. One thing you could do for a very old school sound is turn off polyphony and just change it to one note. So if you are holding a note and play a new one, it will cut off the old one. I like to use at least two voices of polyphony here. That way I can switch between notes pretty smoothly and I get the release from the first note. So. I didn't have it. Right, kind of personal preference. Cool. Next thing I wanna do is find a loop point for this audio. So this is one of the trickiest parts of using pads and samplers. And the reason why we want a loop point is so we can hold out a long sustained pad because the sample is only X amount of length, right? And of course, if we move up on the keyboard, it becomes shorter. 
That's it. If we move down, it's longer. And you could keep it like that. I mean, if you're switching notes a bunch, you could leave it as is, but if you just, you wanna get it looped just for safe measure, safe measure, I'll show you how we do that and we'll do our best here. First thing you wanna do is enable loop here and you're gonna get these loop end and loop start markers. So these are separate from the start and end markers. The start and end markers are for the sample as a whole. So start says, hey, when you press a key, the sample will start playing from here. And end says, hey, this is where the sample ends. Loop start says, hey, start looping here once we reach this loop end. So basically think about it this. I press C, it starts from the start. So once it hits that loop end, it will go to the loop start and basically bounce around within there. So this is the hard part. You heard the clicks on there. It can be very difficult to find a spot that loops very easily. Pro tip here, if you're drenching this shit in effects, delays, and reverb, you can be a little more lenient about pops and clicks because uh, those things can kind of overpower the pops and clicks. Keep that in mind. So we are gonna try to find a good spot here and typically you wanna try to match the waveforms on both sides. And what, about I, what I mean by that if I zoom in here, you'll kind of see this big spike here. On this side, you don't want to have a big spike on the left and then a small peak on the right because you're going to get an audible click. You want to try to match, I guess the amplitude is the correct term to use on the two points. So let's get at it and see if we can get something going. Now we can also use this fade in to create a little bit of a crossfade. So that's actually kind of interesting to me. It, 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 there's a, definitely a bit of difference in those loop points, but I think it also it creates this nice like modulated sound, almost like a sweep uh, on that loop point. So I'm just gonna keep it as is. So, hey, we have our loop point, great. Now let's start messing with this a little bit more. I'm gonna come to the resampler here and just add some grit to this. I'm gonna drop the sample rate to around 20,000. I'm gonna drop the bits to 12. I'm gonna add a little bit of hiss, a little bit of saturation. I'm gonna come into the filter next. I'm gonna enable it for layer A because we only have one layer and I'm gonna drop the filter here and increase the resonance. Now I wanna get a little bit of movement on this pad. So to do that, I'm gonna modulate the cutoff here. And I can use really, well, a lot of different things. If I come to the mod matrix, you'll see all the uh, modulators I can use. I'm gonna use the LFO here and let's use LFO one. So I'm gonna select LFO one. I'm gonna click in this gray box and then click on cutoff here. So now LFO one is mapped to the filter cutoff. And to have it actually affect it, I have to bump up this guy over on the right. So if I bump it up to the right, I believe that means it will increase the cutoff. If I bump it to the left, I believe that will reduce the filter cutoff, I think. <laughs> so let's apply BAM one, a value of one to that LFO. So it should modulate that cutoff at max value. So if I hold the key, we should hear something. Okay, 
So come to our LFO one here. We are using a triangle. I'm gonna sync it and I'm gonna, let's jack up the rate first just to hear what this is doing exactly. drop down how much this LFO modulates that cutoff. Just a little. I want it to be very subtle. Good enough for the example of this video. Next thing I'm going to do is come into some of these effects here. I'm going to add a little bit of delay and sync it with my project tempo. And let's play around with this. Little bit of reverb. Then I'm gonna also tune this up just a couple steps. I'm gonna turn up the volume here. It is a little. Another fun thing you can do here is uh, obviously you can assign things to like your mod wheel on your keyboard if you're using that or these different control knobs here. So you'll see we have P1. I can assign that to anything. If I come into the mod matrix, go to P P1. And let's say I want to mess with the fine tune pitch here. Uh, I can have it go positive or negative. And when I modulate this P1 control, it will then modulate the fine tune on there. Right, or I can go the opposite way. And that's kind of it. You guys get the gist of it. So that's how you can make your own old school sounding pads in here. As mentioned, I do have a uh, preset pack coming out for the Korg Wave Station with a bunch of intelligent jungle pads. And in addition, I am working on a preset pack for Tal Sampler, this intelligent jungle pack here. It's gonna have basses, breaks, uh, FX, gorgeous pads like this. That will be coming out sometime soon. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys found this useful. Peace.